Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Jonathan and today we're gonna be building a Jedi Mind Trick VR app. So you're gonna move your hand and then an object will move and when you move your hand the other way, the object will move back. So it's gonna be very cool. We're gonna be using Oculus's new Interaction SDK to grab the hand poses and we're gonna be using Dootween to uh, basically move the object. So if you like this content, please like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and let's get into this. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is make sure we're set up with Unity. Now, I already have Unity installed on my computer. If you don't know how to install Unity, check out a tutorial that I've linked in the description down below. It's really easy to get set up. You just go to their website, click this Get Started tab, and then they have several options here, Teams, Enterprise. Go to Individual, and you can get a free package right there. Once you get that set up, now we can focus on installing the Oculus Integration SDK. So normally what you would do is you would set up a Unity project and you would install the Oculus Integration SDK from the Asset Store and you would make sure your project's all optimized for VR and everything like that. We're not going to do that. Today we're going to skip that because we've created an easy way to immediately jump into this project, an already pre-built VR project where you don't have to do any of the setup. However, if you do want to do the setup, uh, check out the tutorial in the link in the description down below and we have a little tutorial that shows you how to get all set up with a VR Unity project and Oculus integration and all of that by yourself. Otherwise, let's just do this the fast and easy way. So go to the XR Bootcamp website, click on this blog tab right here, scroll down to uh, this blog right here, the Oculus Interaction SDK has finally been released. Click on that, scroll down and go to this link right here. Now I'm gonna attach this link in the description, so don't worry if you can't find it, it's gonna be in the description. We're just gonna click on this. And what we're gonna do, this takes us to the uh, XR Bootcamp GitHub page, and this is our, our pre-built uh, package with everything you need, pre-built VR project already in there. So go to this code tab right here and download this zip file. Okay, so now that it's downloaded, uh, go to your downloads tab right there. Just open up that zip file and uh, extract it and extract it to whatever location you like. I tend to like to just extract things to my desktop just to make this kind of super easy. But yeah, so I'm gonna extract this to my desktop. We're just gonna wait for that to happen. Okay, so you should have a folder that looks like this. It should be called Interaction SDK. So just open this up, click on Assets, then click on Oculus, then go to the Interaction folder, go to Samples, and then go to Scenes, and then simply uh, click on one of these tabs to open it up. And that is it. That is all you have to do to get set up with, uh, with this. Right here, just click Continue. Okay, so once that's done loading, this should just immediately pop up. We're already just automatically in Unity. The, our project is already set up for VR, and we are ready to go with the Oculus Interaction SDK, which is already installed. So everything is here. Everything is set up. Very, very convenient, to say the least. If we go to the Oculus... Uh, folder right here and we go to interactions and again this is the oculus sdk we're just browsing through the folder we go to samples and we go to scenes and we can see that we can just load whatever scene we like and each of these scenes is if if one of them will load it's taking a little bit of time but each of these scenes is kind of its own little uh, sample framework. So you can see we have a scene right here. Uh, this is the basic hand pose scene, and you can see all the different hand poses that we can try out. And you can experiment with this on your own if you'd like. Uh, you know, you just you put in your Oculus headset and play it in the debugger, and you'll be able to test all of this out just really easily. Here we have like a, a UI sample scene. Um, we have some things that you can grab with your hands. 
So it's, it's very cool and we get this all just automatically. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually create our own scene to build our Jedi Mind Trick app. All right, so let's start by creating our new scene and we'll click right there and we'll just create uh, a new scene. And I'm gonna call my scene Jedi Hand Tricks. I'm really bad at naming stuff, so I hope it's, <laughs> you can name yours whatever you like. This is what I'm gonna name mine. And we're just going to click on this and now we're in our new scene. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna type in the search bar. We're gonna type Oculus Interaction and we're gonna look right here. This These options should pop up and we're gonna look for the Oculus Interaction sample rig. Now, this is the new rig, uh, the new kind of player rig that comes with the uh, Oculus Interaction SDK. And we're gonna go through it a little bit. And again, in the tutorial that I've attached in the description, we go through this a little more. We talk about exactly what each component does. I'm not gonna get into too much detail with this, but if we open this up, we can see that we have an OVR camera rig, and this is kind of just our rig. Uh, you know, this is this is how we see, um, and we have our tracking space, and we have our center eye anchor. Which you know, if you're familiar with the Oculus integration, if you're familiar with the um, the Oculus Player controller, it's very similar to that. Uh, you have a center eye anchor that tracks your head. You have uh, left hand and right hand trackers as well. And then we have this new prefab right here, this input OVR. Now this prefab is really the core of the interaction SDK. This is where we have, you know, we're able to manipulate our hands into different poses. If you go down here, if we look under this hands tab, we can see that we have all these bones right here. Uh, the index palm collider, the index knuckle, the uh, you know the middle. We these are all bones in the left hand that are mapped to uh, you know to your hand that we can manipulate into hand poses. So this is kind of what we want to focus on right here if we want to get our hand poses. Now before we jump into this further, let's just make sure that our Oculus project is set up correctly. And to do that, we're going to just go to. Um, Let's see, how do I do this? I, I just usually go to config, uh, type that in the search bar, and then I look for the Oculus project configuration right here. And this is the configuration for our project. And we can just see hand tracking support. We can do uh, controllers and hands, hands only. I'm gonna do controllers and hands just so we have that option. And just make sure that this is set up to either controllers and hands or hands only. Okay, so let's think about this project. What we want to do is we want to have our hands be in a certain pose, and then we want to have an object move based off of that pose, right? So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to select our poses. So the Oculus Interaction SDK has some pre-built poses. And if we go back to the uh, Oculus uh, folder, the Oculus Interaction folder, where we have our sample scenes, and we go right here, I think the, uh, the scene was, let's see, basic pose detection. Let's save our scene, go back. We can see that right here, these are the pre-configured scenes that Oculus has provided with us. So I think, I think for this tutorial, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create one custom hand pose, which we're gonna do ourselves, which I'll show you how to do later, but we're also going to create a, uh, a pre-built hand pose as well. And I wanna use this one right here, the paper, to kind of be our, our first hand pose. So let's jump back into our scene and let's create an empty game object. And let's title this Jedi Poses. Again, you can call it whatever you want. I'm just, I'm just going with this. Okay, now let's look up in our search bar. Let's go to Pose Detection or Poses. And we're just gonna find a nice pre-built pose, that paper pose that I wanted. And you can see we have a pose detection paper audio. I don't want that one, but what I do want is the paper pose. So let's just type a paper and yeah, it just pops right up there. We have the paper pose and let's just click and drag it right here. And you can't see it yet, but this is essentially uh, all we need to uh, kind of import our paper pose in there. Before we go further, let's just create our scene a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new 3D object, and this is just to help visualize everything. I'm 
going to create a plane. And let's make sure this plane is below our, uh, our Oculus sample rig so that it's not covering it up. Uh, let's also create a material for this plane. So I'm just going to go back and I'm going to go to Oculus and I'm just going to, uh, you know what, I'm going to go to assets and I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it materials. Okay, and let's create a new material right here. We'll just go to material, we'll do new mat, we'll do floor mat, uh, just to differentiate and we'll just color it uh, red. Or you know what, we'll color it blue. You can color it whatever you like. And then we'll just click and drag that on. So we have kind of a way to visualize our space here. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to create our object to move. And we're just gonna create a, another 3D object. We're gonna create a cube click and drag that so that it's not covering the uh you know your your oculus rig and yeah this is kind of our standard cube you can add new materials to it if you like add whatever you like but i'm just going to leave it blank so now just to test out everything works let's actually just hop in and and press play just to see if this works so grab your uh grab your oculus headset right here make sure that it's plugged in with the oculus link cable and let's uh, let's try this out and see if this works just to test it out. Okay, so I'm in the Oculus headset and I'm going to press play with my desktop because I just want to go in with my hands. I don't want to go in with my controllers. And yeah, here I am in my hands and the rig works and my hands are moving and everything looks great. Okay, so we're all good to go. Now let's uh, make our hand poses and get started with that. So if you remember, we have this paper pose right here, but right now, if you go into the app and you do the paper pose, nothing's gonna happen because we don't have a script attached. So we wanna get this square to move whenever we go like that, right? We want it to move in a certain direction and see what happens. So what we're going to do is we're going to install the DoTween framework because that's a great way to get objects to move super easily in VR. Okay, so this is DoTween. This is their website right here. And DoTween is a Unity framework that basically helps you animate objects in Unity super easily. It's a lot more than that, and it, it's a lot more in-depth than that. It's a fairly large and robust framework. However, that is just kind of a basic overview. If you wanna kind of learn about it more, you can go into their documentation. And the reason why this framework is so great is because of their extensive documentation. Uh, you can see that they have just so many things here. They have, uh, you know, uh, stuff that covers their audio mixers, audio sources, uh, line renderers, different material manipulations you can do, like do color, changing the color of things. Uh, you know, you can uh, manipulate rigid bodies, transforms, just so many things that you can do with this framework. And I highly suggest that if you're looking for an easy way to move objects or animate objects in Unity, you should check this out in more detail. So this is their website. It'll be in the description down below if you want to take a look at it. But let's go over to the Unity Asset Store and install this framework. So we'll just go to the Unity Asset Store right here and we will look up DoTween. I'll just say no thanks to that. I'll look up DoTween. And there's two different versions you can get. You can get the DoTween Pro, which is about $15, but we're just gonna use the free DoTween and it's DoTween Hot Tween V2. And I've already installed it. You're probably gonna have to download this, but I already have it installed. And if you already have it installed, you can just open it in Unity. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna open it in Unity. And it'll pull up this package manager right here and fetch the package, do tween, hot tween. Uh, you can update it if you'd like. I think I will just to make sure that it's all updated and ready to go and now I will import it. And we're just gonna click import and we're gonna wait for that to load. Okay, and now, yeah, we should be good to go. Uh, let's just exit out of these and okay. Now we're in our scene and we can make our script. So let's create a new script. Let's go to our assets or actually let's just create a new folder right here uh, just to make it easy and we'll call it scripts and we'll create a new C-sharp script and we'll call this move cube. 
Okay, and let's open that up. All right, so now that we're in our script, uh, let's do a few things first. Let's delete this update method because we don't need that. Um, and let's add a using statement here. Let's import the package that we just downloaded. So we'll import the DG, the do tween package, and that is uh, just type up using DG dot tweening. And now we should have access to all of the great utility of do tween. So we got to define a couple variables here, all right? And the way I like to do this is I always like to go back into the Unity Editor to kind of, uh, you know, determine what we need to do. So we want to move this cube uh, to a position. Now we can move it sideways or we can move it up or we can move it back, we can move it pretty much anywhere. But I want to move it up, okay? I want this to go up like that and then back down again with a hand gesture. So in order to do that, let's define a couple variables. Let's first create a private vector three. And this will be the original position. And we'll just call it original pose right there. Then let's create a serialized field. And serialized field just means we'll be able to access it from the, uh, from the editor right there. So let's create serialized field. And let's make this a private vector three as well. And this will be the final position. So this will be the position that we end up moving our uh, cube to. We'll do final position. And let's then define our original position. And we'll do that by just doing original position. And we'll set that equal to the transform of this object uh, dot position. So now it's set equal to the position that it is starting in. All right, and that's basically all we need for our variables, right? We have our original position, which we uh, set in the start method at the beginning of the game. We set it to the transform uh, dot position of the object. Uh, so the, that's the original position. And then we have a serialized field uh, private variable where we set the final position. And we'll do that manually in the editor. And you'll see how I do that in a minute if you're not familiar with serialized field. But now we need two methods. We need a method to move it down and we need a method to move it up. So let's create these two methods. Let's do, uh, and let's make them public. So we'll make a public method called move up. And we'll just do that. And then we'll make, and I misspelled move, and then we'll make another method that's also public called move down. And I, yes. And now you get to see the magic of DoTween and just how simple this actually is. So let's take the transform of our game object, our cube, and let's just simply add this built-in method that DoTween has called doMove. And this just makes everything just so much easier. So when we want to move it up, we'll move it to the final position. And if you look right here, this doMove method takes two variables, right? It takes the transform of the uh, of the end value where we want to move it to and then it takes a float for the duration so that's the amount of time that it will take to uh, move this object so i'm going to set the duration to th uh three i'm going to do a uh yeah we're going to set it to three and we're going to see how that looks so it'll take uh three seconds to move that up or yeah and then we'll do the we'll just copy this for the move down and this time we'll just move it back to its original position and we'll do the same amount of time and then we will save this and let's test it out 
So we'll go back to our game. We will take this script, we'll drag it onto the cube that we wanna move. And you can see right here, we have the final position, this vector three, which we have to set. So let's drag our cube up to where we want it to end. And I want it to end right there on the Y axis. So let's copy and paste that variable, paste it in to where Y is. And let's also copy the coordinates of X and Z, which will stay the same because we're not moving it to the side and we're not moving it to the back. So those will stay exactly the same. And then we have our script kind of all set up. And the only thing we have to do now is connected to our hand pose. So we have this paper pose right here, which is a, a flat hand. And this is pretty simple. The first thing we have to do is just decide what hand we want to reference. So that's this hand ref right here. So we're gonna go into the input OVR. We're going to go into the hands tab and we're gonna determine, you can do your left or your right. I'm gonna do the, the right, uh, you know what? Let's do, let's do left actually. I'm gonna do the left hand for this one. And then we have these two callback methods right here, right? So these are callback methods and we can decide, you know, when it's selected, uh, we can move it up and maybe when it's uh, unselected, we can move it down. So let's click this plus tab right here and let's drag our cube game object into that script and let's look for the move cube script. And you can see we have our two public methods that we created in the script right here. So I wanna move it up when this hand pose is selected and when it's not selected, I want to move it down. So drag that in and do the same thing, but this time put the move down script. And change this, instead of runtime, change this to editor and runtime so that we can use it throughout the game. All right, and that is essentially all we need to do. So let's save this and let's grab our Oculus and let's test it out. I forgot to uh, move the cube back to its original starting position. So let's move this cube back to the starting position where it was just so we don't have that problem. Now let's test this out in our quest. All right, so when I move my left hand like that, you can see it rises. And when I close it, it falls. And I can just keep doing that. I can keep doing that over and over. And yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I can, uh, it's almost like I can manipulate it with the force. <laughs> All right, so let's go back into our project. All right, so we could end it right there, but I don't wanna do that. Instead, I wanna come up with a new pose. So what I wanna do is when we pinch our fingers together, I want the cube to scale. So I want it to get bigger when we pinch our fingers together. And let me just actually check first if this isn't a built-in pose, because if it is, then there's no point in doing it. Uh, and no, it is not. Yes, so we have to create this ourselves. Okay, so. The first thing we're gonna do is we're going to create a new pose. So we're gonna go to this, our Jedi poses, and we're gonna create an empty game object and we're gonna call it pinch finger. Okay. And now what we're gonna do is how do we do this? Okay, now Oculus has some great documentation in its, uh, on its website that you can go check out. Uh, let's just go look at that. So this is Oculus's uh, kind of developer webpage. Uh, this is where all their documentation is. And, you know, if you don't understand anything when you're programming or developing, just look at the documentation. There's it's, it's all here, right? Every answer to your question, it's all here. So we're going to go scroll down to this interaction SDK and we're going to click on interactions. And we're just going to see some, well, actually, let's scroll down over here and find poses poses, 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 um, hand pose detection, right? That's, that's where it is right there. And this should actually give us all we need to know. So as you can see, they have their custom poses, which we already looked at, but then we can look at, uh, uh, at this to kind of get a sense of how to create our own poses. So we got to use the shape recognizer, which we're going to do. And we can see all the different types of poses uh, that the shape recognizer identifies. We have, you know, open, neutral, closed. Um, curling is when your, you know, your fingers are all curled in like that. Flexion 
is when you know you have it kind of at an angle right there and you'll see how this all works together in a minute when we when we get our, our hand shapes going in unity but you know this is just to kind of give you an overview of what these terms mean in the SDK opposition this is the one that we want to look at we want to have when but so opposition is whenever our fingers are touching our thumb so whenever our pointer finger is touching our thumb like that that's essentially when we want to scale so opposition is what we want if you want to look through this more this is you know you have transform recognition you know where is your you know what what direction is your wrist what direction is your palm these are all things that you can put into the customized shape that we're about to make so let's go back to unity now that we know where the documentation is and how to find it and let's create our shape so i'm going to go back to assets I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it shapes, or actually I'm going to call it hand poses. Hopefully that's not already a folder. I don't think it matters. And then let's go to our shape. So let's go to create, let's go to Oculus, let's go to interaction, SDK, and pose detection and shape. So this is our new shape and we're going to call it pinch. And you can see we now have all these things up here, these configs, where we can kind of define the shape of our uh, hand gesture here. So let's do pinch gesture. That'll be the name. And yeah, let's, let's kind of look at these. And all those things that we just saw in the documentation, they're all here, right? Uh, curl, flexion, abduction, opposition, they're all here. So whatever shape you wanna make, you can do that uh, by by kind of defining these positions right here. Now, the only shape that I want to make is the pinch with the index. And I'm not going to define any of these. If I wanted to get more specific, I could define maybe I want the middle in a specific area or the ring in a specific area. And that would all help with the, the, the definition. But for, for purposes of speed here, I just want to do a, a very simple pinch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the index finger and I'm going to do opposition, right? And we have several options here. We have near, we have none, we have touching. Let's do touching, right? And this, and remember opposition is when one of our fingers on our hand touches our thumb. It could be any finger. We're gonna do the index finger. All right, so now that we have our shape, let's go back to our pinch finger. And you can see it's a little empty right here. We should make it look more like our paper pose and our paper pose has all of these references and scripts attached. So let's add these scripts to our pinch finger. So the first one we're gonna add is our hand reference and uh, we'll just add that. And then we're gonna add, uh, we'll go back, we'll select our Unity event. So we'll get our selector and we want the, uh, the Unity event wrapper and that's how we get our callback methods. And then we wanna go back to our paper pose and you can just do this and, and reference back to this, the active state selector script. So let's grab that, active state selector. Let's grab our active state group and we'll just do the active state group. And then let's grab our shape recognizer and our transform recognizer as well. So we'll grab our shape recognizer, active state, and then we'll grab our transform recognizer uh, as well. And we'll do the active state. Remember to do the active state for both of these. And now let's, uh, let's fill these in. Okay, so I just wanted to adjust the camera a little bit so you can see what's going on down here. I realized that it was blocking this. But uh, the first thing we're gonna fill in is this feature threshold right here. So let's just click on the default settings. And if we go into the default settings, you can see that these are just kind of default settings for the threshold of our, our hand movement. So we have like our wrist up threshold, our wrist down threshold, and you can make these yourself. You can customize it. And all you do to do that is you just go to create, you go to Oculus, you go to interaction SDK, and then pose detection and then transform thresholds. And you can do that if you want. We're not gonna do it because ours is pretty basic. I don't think we need it. So we'll fill that in right there. We're gonna change this up vector type to world. And we're gonna go to the transform configs and I'm just gonna show you those. So here we have a bunch of uh, different configs that we can do for our transform. So, you know, for instance, we can have our, our palm up and, and these are conditions, right? So when our palm up, 
when our palm is up, this will be like a, a true or false condition. Um, you know, that's when the, the hand gesture is recognized. So we can do this if we want. I don't think I'm going to do anything. The only thing I'm going to do is pinch clear. That's the only one I'm going to do, just to make it very clear that there's this pinch that goes on. Now for our hand reference, let's choose to do, I did the left hand last time, so this time I'm going to do the right hand. And I'm going to drag the, uh, the right hand right here, and I'm going to drag that into the hand reference script. And then I'm also going to now drag, since we have that reference in the pinch finger, I'm going to drag the pinch finger into our hand reference down here, just so I have that as well. And now let's go up to the shape recognizer. Now we made our shape already, so we can add that. And let's go to our pinch shape, if we can find it. I think it's, I think it should be somewhere here. Uh, yes, it's right here. So pinch shape, and we'll drag that into our shapes. And remember, this is the shape that we created. And then let's drag our hand reference in again. And now we have our logic operators here. And we have two active states that we want, right? Um, let's just add those both in there. And we have, uh, and these basically, both of these conditions have to be true for the hand to be recognized. And we have our first active state right here. This is our, our shape, um, our shape recognizer. And then we have our second active state right here, the transform recognizer, so the pinch right there. Now let's uh, go up and let's now just drag this active state group into our state selector. And all we gotta do now is add the callback methods just like we did on our paper pose. So let's, oh, and we also have to drag the active state selector into this selector right there. And now we can add our callback methods. So let's add. And I think for this one, I'm only going to do when selected. Um, and we haven't built a script yet. Keep that in mind, but we're just going to uh, prepare. So just drag the cube in there and we'll come back to this. Okay. Now that we have this all filled out, let's make our script. Okay, so we're back in our assets. Now let's go to our scripts folder and go back to our script. And I've already started it here a little bit, but let's add a new public method. Uh, and we're just gonna call it scale. So public void scale. And we're going to just do this really, really easy thing that DoTween provides us. We're gonna take the transform of our object. And then we're just going to add this built-in method called do scale. And this method takes two parameters. It's very similar to the moving method. Um, we are just, if you look right here, float over it, you can see that we have a vector three n value for the scaling, and then we have the duration of the scale. So we're going to scale this to two, and we're going to make the duration uh, 3f, just like our move. And let's save that. And now for the, uh, the creme de la creme, the final moment here, we are going to add this method to our pinch finger and we're gonna see if it works. So let's go back, let's add our script to our callback. Um, and this time let's do scale right there. And now let's lift our object up. We can lift it up, keep it lifted. And now let's pinch our finger to scale it. And it does scale. It takes a little while to pick up the tracking. Again, we could refine this gesture to make the uh, gesture be recognized faster. But yes, it does scale. And now we can lift up our enlarged cube. All right, everybody. Well, that is it for the tutorial. I hope you had a great time. I hope you learned something about hand tracking. If you're interested in skilling up more and learning more about XR Bootcamp and the types of courses we offer, I highly suggest you check out our website, xrbootcamp.com. 
and you check out some of our courses. Right now we have the XR prototype course coming up. It's the intermediate level course. It teaches you how to rapidly iterate in VR and build a, a VR application. You'll have tons of instruction, tons of guides will help you out. And as a free resource, I highly suggest you check out our Discord. Tons of free help there. And please feel free to share your projects that you're developing in your own time. There's tons of people who would be happy to answer your questions. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching the tutorial and I will see you next time.